All right, welcome. We're going to talk about recovery between the cross country season and winter training. Uh, you might be joining me on various platforms. If you want to leave a comment, YouTube's the best place to do it, but this fancy system here uh, should allow me to view comments from any platform. Okay, we're going to get right into it. What should you be doing? Oh, and how great is this photo, by the way? I mean, um, I had to purchase this, but this is uh, the uh, Mesa Trail in Boulder, Colorado, heading, you'd be coming from Chautauqua Park, heading uh, south, and at one point it kind of curves and you're looking up at one of the flat irons there. So I, I, I love this photo. Thought that I, I did not take this photo, but I, but I love that spot in the trail. Okay, so here's the deal. We're going to keep this concise and audio friendly. So you can be listening to this if you're somebody who streams YouTube or streams Facebook or, or whatever. Um, the, the slides are not something that you have to be watching. And the recording is always available on the same YouTube link, okay? Um, so if you're not able to join this live or you're watching the first few minutes, um, that's great. Um, all right, here we go. If you're a high school athlete and you have an excellent coach, don't listen to me, just follow their plan. That's pretty simple, right? There, there's a, an assumption here today that, that you need a little bit of guidance once the cross country season ends. And as we'll talk about at the end of the webinar, um, you might need some guidance with winter training and, and, and I, I might be able to help you then. But, but the bottom line is if you have a solid plan and it doesn't have to be something written out every single day, as, as you'll see in what I'm about to share, there's, um, there's a lot of room for interpretation. Okay. So, all right. How much time should athletes take off? There's one school of thought that says, Hey, you just rest, you know, two or three days and you are back into running. Okay. And I understand that the idea with that is that the chance of injury is going to increase the more time you take off. Another school of thought that says, Hey, we're doing one to two weeks of nothing, no activity, sit on the couch, sedentary. Okay. Um, that's pretty extreme as well. Like a lot of things in training. And I don't do this just to keep the two camps happy but I think there's a middle ground be between these two, what I kind of consider ex extremes. So, so let, let's look at that. We got to acknowledge two points first. Here's point number one. Today is November 28th, and it doesn't matter when your state meet and track is, whether it's May 1st, May 15th, June 1st, June 15th, you have more time from today to that state track meet than you had from the beginning of the summer training so, you, you know, the end of track, let's say you, you took a week or two off from that date, we'll just say roughly June 1st or June 10th until the state cross country meet, even in states like California, where the state meet and track goes later, and they just finished their state cross country meet, it all shifts in such a way that you have more time for winter training and track than you had for summer training and cross country. And we often forget that. Number two, I want you to acknowledge it, acknowledge this. I firmly believe that if a high school athlete gets 48 weeks a year of solid training and racing, okay, there's 52 weeks in a year, and I'm saying you can take two weeks between cross country um, and track training or, or winter training, as I'll refer to it today. You can take two weeks, and you don't have to be training hard. You don't have to be racing. You, you can do the same thing after track, and you'll be ready to go. I believe those two things. If you believe the first thing, right, and you I mean, you have to believe it. It's just numerical. There's more time between now to the state track meet. Then here's the time. You then here's the deal. You have plenty of time to get ready. Okay, you should not be in a hurry. You have plenty of time to train, so you should feel good about that. Number two, like like the book says over here, right? Consistency is key, right? So if you'll just say to yourself, when I resume training, if I can stay consistent and stay injury free. If I can just link up week after week after week and get month after month after month, consistency leads to fast racing. And for most high school athletes, if you stay injury free, link together a lot of weeks and several months of training, you're going to PR. Okay. Very nice. Um, okay. First week here, here's the deal. Um, and, and I might keep alluding to California because their state meet was yesterday, man, Newberry park. Oh my God. Those boys. Absolutely amazing. Um, just, just an amazing moment for high school running. Um, they almost perfect scored and some, some of the stats are amazing, but, but, but here's, here's the bottom line and a shout out to Ryan Mitchell. Um, and he ran well as well. He's somebody I worked with this summer. 
Um, the, the, the bottom line is I hope yesterday went well. If, if you raced, uh, if you raced yesterday, there, there were some footlocker regionals and whatnot. A couple weeks ago, there were Nike regionals go back weeks from that. There, there was a state cross country meet. Here's the bottom line. Hopefully that race goes well the next day. And I'm assuming a Saturday race the next day, it's probably Sunday. You are going to run that day. And, and if that's a day off for you, um, for, for, for your family, then, then, then may, maybe you're not going to run, but if you can, I would go for your run. And you're saying, what am I doing for run? You're doing a normal pre-race day. So you're doing your normal warm up. You do just a little bit of running for the strides. You don't do fast strides. You do them at the 5k race pace, kind of, kind of the middle of the race pace you did the day before. And then you do some mobility work. This assumes that you're doing mobility work with your team, w- w- which you should be doing. What, you, what you're doing is you're trying to identify some niggles, right? Some places like, does your left Achilles feel a little bit funky or does your right IT band feel a little bit funky? Um, right now, my right calf feels a little bit funky because yesterday I did Jeff Belay's warm up, and we will, we will, we'll, we'll talk about that. But you just want to identify those things. Okay. And then the uh, next day you're doing the same thing, but you're not running. You're, you're going to do that mobility work. You could do some soft tissue work. Okay. Well, like I'll talk about with athletes who do my winter training, we use lacrosse balls. We use various um, ways to, to, to loosen up fascia, loosen up muscles. So that's the type of work you want to do on day two. This is also a time where if you really feel like, man, my right IT but band is locked up and it hurts to walk or something, this is when you reach out to the physical therapist or the chiropractor or the massage therapist. Now, 95% of kids are not going to need to do that, right? But, but the idea being you don't wait until fast forward 10, 12, 14 days from now to, to resume training and call that person. You call them now. Right. Okay. So you might not not like this next part. Day three, day four, day five, day six, you are taking, uh, taking time off from running. You are not running. You are not exercising. Um, you could make an argument that you could play a little basketball, but I disagree. I think you should get bored. And here's the deal. Don't, you know, don't try and like do a lot of housework. Don't do twice as much studying for school. Don't, you know, if, I'm thinking of boys who are Eagle Scouts doing an Eagle Scout project. You're like, I'm going to work, you know, five hours each day of, the, of those four days that I'm off. Just let yourself get bored. Mentally, you need a little bit of, of, of a break. What we're doing in these four days is both a physiological break and a psychological break. Okay. At the end of that week, and this is often Saturday, if, if you race Saturday, um, what, what, what those four days would have been, by the way, is they would have been, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So we're probably looking at Saturday now, if your state meet was on Saturday, um, brisk walk or a bike ride. And I know brisk walk sounds kind of funny in my, my book for marathon runners, simple marathon training. Uh, these adults only train six days a week, but they go for a brisk walk on Sunday, really long, long run Saturday, may, maybe 20, even 22 miles once often 18 miles and 20 miles. And then they do that brisk walk. And, you know, it's one of those things that it took me a number of years to encourage. It's hard to tell a runner to go for a walk. Like I totally get it. But if you make it a brisk walk, do it with a family member. Sometimes you can't do it with your dog, by the way, because it needs to be brisk, but, but do that 30 minutes, 60 minutes, um, going for a hike or, or a swim is great as well. This, the day after that, which could be Sunday, you could do the same thing. If, if I was you, I would take the day off, watch some college sports, play some esports. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you're crafty. Um, there's some crafty kids at my house, and they would make something on a Sunday. But the bottom line is those two days, no running, and there's no intensity what, to what you're doing. So, for instance, I live about 30. From where that photo was ta- taken in that opening slide, I can get to that part of that trail um, drive 30 minutes to the trailhead. And if I hike really fast, I can get there in about 90 minutes. If I walk and jog and do kind of an up-tempo thing, I can get there, you know, about 45 minutes, but that's not what I would do that day. So if I were to go, uh, on a cool hike from my house right here, I would not have intensity as part of that hike. Okay. So bottom line is that you get to do something those days, but, but it's mellow. Okay. Second week. Now we're going to run but you're not formally training. So use the word run, but don't use the word train. You're not training now. 
okay? So the key this week is, is in, uh, just to enjoy being outside, enjoy moving, and don't think about your track PRs, and don't think about, man, I'm going to train so hard this winter. You know, I was really lame with my my threshold training. I, I didn't know how hard to run those workouts, and I was running them more like an up-tempo run, but not a true threshold, and I blew off some of the, the post-run work. And, you know, Coach Johnson's telling me about this warm-up by this guy, Jeff Belay, and he says it's really powerful and that I should do it. Don't think about any, any of that stuff, Okay. You are just getting to run, but you're not training and you're just enjoying some runs. So now we will talk about uh, what, what you're going to do. We're going to do days one, three, and five. So you do a day, then you have a day completely off. And I didn't necessarily make that clear here. You're, you're going to do what I'm about to explain, take a day completely off, do what I'm about to explain, take a day completely off, do what I'm about to explain. Those days completely off, you could have other activity, bike ride, basketball, you know, flag football, you can be active those days, but you're not running. Okay. I'll share a slide at the end of this with a QR code where you can go to coachjjohnson.com and get Jeff Bollet's warmup. It is awesome. I mean, my middle-aged body after doing the warmup a few days, I feel so much better. My hamstring flexibility when I'm doing leg swings, leg swings are, are something that a lot of you do. But after doing Jeff's warm-up and leg swings, there's a there's a handful of uh, those exercises that are part of the warm-up. I felt so much better doing them. I mean, it was amazing. My my foot got a little bit above my hips with that. Um, what would you call it? A uh, sagittal plane leg swing. Um, so you're going to do that. Now you're going to download those videos and it's going to take some time to learn that. So this is a mellow day. You're going to be looking at your phone. The, the videos are really cool. They come on an app, look at your phone, you do the exercise. Then you go for a really mellow aerobic run on the article I wrote on this topic. I said 20 to 30 minutes, just, it, it really shouldn't be more than that, but you, you want to pick a run that you were doing maybe two or three weeks out from your last meet and, and the, the shortest day. Okay. In that run, not a, not in addition to, but within those 20 or 30 or 35 or 40 minutes, do three to five strides for 15 or 20 seconds, just a gentle stride at the 5K race pace you ran the week prior. The reason you're doing that is just to get your legs moving just a little bit. This is the very baby step in a progression of strides that you're going to do throughout the winter so that when you resume practice with your team in February, you are ready to go right? You are ready to uh, run 800 meter pace, maybe even 400 meter pace. Okay. And then the post run work, you got to go to coachjjohnson.com and um, it'll be about 10 or 15 minutes of work. Now, so this day that you're looking about or looking at on this slide, this is a solid 45, 50 minutes. I, I mean, you, you are, you're not training with intensity. You're just running and, 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 and having fun but um, I would think of it as, hey, I'm learning Jeff's warm up and I'm learning Jay's cool down and I'm just having some fun, enjoying being outside in between those things. So this could be Monday, Wednesday, Friday, it could be Tuesday, Thursday, um, Saturday. OK, and then obviously those those days in between, you can be active, but you're not running. If you did Monday, Wednesday, Friday, the question is what I do Saturday. You don't go for a run, but now you go for something long. It's a 60 to 90 minute bike ride and, and, and it can be a long one with your family. It could be a, a two hour hike, something like that. So brisk walk, bike ride, hike, something long, but not a long run. If it's uh, Sunday, you know, if you did the Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and then the question is, what do I do Sunday? It's the, the same things, but we're going to dial it back 45 to 60 minute brisk walk um, or bike ride or 75 to 90 minute hike. Not no intensity here but you can enjoy that day. Um, and now you get a train, right? So after two weeks, you resume training and now we are ready to go, right? Here, I, I wish I would have had this in this slide. The goal when you start, when you resume training, when you start training again, you should you should be raring to go. Um, there, there, there's a term we use at CU, chomping at the bit, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's a horse, ready to go, fired up, ready to train. And the idea is if you go backwards over those two weeks we just described, you should have gotten a little bit bored. Okay. I really think that word is important. If you're bored for a couple of weeks, then when you resume training, um, you, you've got the, the right energy and the right intensity. Okay. Remember consistency is key in the winter. And if we can be injury free, and sometimes I say mostly injury free, because if you have a niggle here and there, that that's probably to be expected. 
if, if your volumes are high and your intensities are relatively high, I mean, you're not going to train, you know, those 48 weeks, not have something, uh, bother you at some point. There's a difference between a niggle and a full blown, blown injury. So we want to be injury free. And then the car metaphor tweet tweeted this yesterday. People liked it. So here we go. Athletes winter training is simple. Number one, build the aerobic engine. Number two, strengthen the chassis to handle the growing engine. And that's really important, right? We have to strengthen the chassis. These are all from consistency is key. Number three, rev the engine from day one. And we will talk about that. We will talk about revving the engine from day one on Wednesday. I'll be doing a webinar about winter training, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. And we will talk about what you do week one, day one, okay? Here's the deal. Everybody's fired up about number one. Everybody wants to build the aerobic engine. Most people in 2021 are bought into the idea that you have to strengthen the chassis. Okay. They're like, you do core work. You have functional strength. Um, you might, might go to the weight room and, and believe in that stuff. That's great. The bottom line is it's revving the engine. It's number three. I see coaches under assign it. I see athletes blowing it off. Does that make sense? So you've got to rev the engine. You have to do strides the very first week. If you have a great coach, you might be doing speed development. You might be doing flying, flying 30s, flying 40s that very first week. If you're on your own and you're in the Midwest and the wind is blowing and you know there's snow starting to come down and the surface isn't safe, it might not even make sense to be running 5K strides, let alone you know some faster strides. Well, what I share with athletes in the winter, there's some things we can do to strengthen the posterior chain, things like wall runs, some of the general strength we do so that we're getting stronger and, and we're strengthening our, our body as much as we can, even if we can't run fast. I mean, if you live in San Diego all year, all year long, it is easier to rev the engine and run really fast. But the bottom line is most people um, in this day and age with, unfortunately, you, you know, everything warming up you're able to do some revving of the engine all year round. Okay. So, um, all right. You should be wondering this. How do I get the videos of the warm up and the post run work that you suggest I do? Okay. So I shared this in the chat, go to coachjjohnson.com. I'm pretty excited. This is the new website. It's all up there. And if you were to look at this site right now, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Um, so you can see this. So you would go to free videos or where the button says free workouts and videos. Now, uh, you know, underneath there, it says high school runners, parents, coaches, adult runners. If you click on those things, they'll, there'll be places that'll take you there as well. Um, but the, the bottom line is um, this is where I talk about my high school program. And what you can do right now, if you have your phone and you're looking at this, you can, this QR code, just, just take a picture of that. It'll take you to coachjjohnson.com. Um, I, I do want to quickly talk about the winter training. I do. If, if you're watching this, you're, I would say most high school students are going to break into one of three different camps. One camp is this, you have a fantastic coach who worked their tail off this summer and this fall to help you run fast and they're fired up. Now they might not be meeting you for the next two, three, four weeks and they, but they will give you a training document to make it clear. Hey, these are the things I want you doing. If you have that coach, that's awesome. You do not need to need me. You can ignore the next about two minutes of this. If you're in the middle and you get a plan from your coach, but it doesn't have all the pre, you know, it doesn't have good warmups. It doesn't have good post run stuff. And it's a little bit vague about training. You might want to consider my winter training. The third group is somebody who your coach says, Hey, I'm going to see you at, you know, last week of February, first week of Mark with official practice. I, I hope you have a good winter. You know, you're running about, you know, 40, 50 miles a week during the cross country season. Probably just want to do that this winter. And I'm sure we'll have a great track season. I am critical of that coach. But and here's one thing too. That coach is not watching this right now, right? But you might be a high school athlete who has that, that type of experience. And if that's you, please consider my, my winter training program. Um, all the information's on the website there. It's really detailed. I think the, the three important things are this. You get daily customized training. So daily, obviously every workout customized, meaning you do a really detailed intake and I'm going to create a training plan based on where you left off in cross country. And, and we're going to dial things back a little bit. We won't get to that same volume that you left off with until about three, four or five weeks into training. It'll be more like, like four or five weeks for most kids. Um, 
And then, you, you know, what, what I think is, is really important is all of these training videos, right? You'll have access to this video library and you'll have the integration of pre-run and post-run work into your training to fit the theme of the day. The post-run stuff that we do after long runs sometimes is similar um, to what we do after track workouts, but there's some athletes who join me this summer who will then join me again this winter, who they'll have different post-run work this winter after some of, of their workouts because we want things to be, to be a little more intense. Okay, so, so that's integrated well. And here's the deal. Winter training's hard. So I send you a motivational message each day. It's often a video. Sometimes it's a quote I really like. Sometimes it's an excerpt from a book. Sometimes it's a little story about um, you, you know when I was training hard or when, when I was working with athletes in the winter. This is not something I did during summer training. I don't think it's as important and as necessary, but if you're really fired up about having a great track season, I think you'll enjoy something motivational um, each day. So th there's all kinds of other things included there. The pricing and all that is there as well. Um, yeah, and, and we'll just go through this quick. You know, if you ask yourself these three questions, um, do I have a well thought out integration of pre and post run work to keep me in injury free? Okay. So you, you say, do I have that or do I not have that? Do you have a coach with years or in my case, decades of experience to help you reach your, your, your potential, right? And, and we talked about that. Well, I run PRs and track this spring without a comprehensive training plan this winter. And I think that's the thing in 2021, we got to be honest about, right? People are running really fast. The sophistication in the best programs is high. I mean, when, when I talk about, when I talk about running with the guys I ran with at CU and I explained to them the sophistication of the training plans that, you know, the best high school kids are, are using, it blows their mind. I mean, it's more sophisticated than what we did in college. And there was a book, right? Running with the Buffaloes, man. I mean, it's, it's, it's really interesting. The integration of all the pre-run and post-run weight rooms, plyometrics, hurdle mobility, Hur hurdle mobility is a great example of something that we can all do that, that is just a great way to improve hip mobility, but also core strength and, and postural uh, strength as well. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it's, it, it's just one of those things that you and your family, you have to be honest about where you fit in those three categories. Awesome coach, tons of training. You definitely don't need my help. Something in the middle, you may or may not want to consider it. And if you're in that third group, I think you need to be honest that if you want to make a jump in fitness this winter, um, you might need to join me this um this winter so you can run fast in the spring. So there's a QR code again, and now we'll take some questions. Thanks for joining me too. Um, I hope I did keep that concise. I think I did a decent job of that. Um, okay, I'll leave that. Questions. Yeah, and you, you can also... Um, Oh, Travis, it's good to see you. Travis uh, chimed in. Enjoy being lazy because you sure don't get it very often. Absolutely. Travis is a really good college coach. And um, I, I think it will. And, and I think that's a message we often don't hear, right? That we should enjoy uh, being lazy. So I'm going to put a couple things in the chat here. Put the winter coaching link in here. Um, pop that in there. And then coaches, I'm going to not, I'm not going to talk about this now. We're doing a webinar and coaches, I'll put this in here. Coaches, December 11th is a Saturday. We're going to do it at 10 a.m. Eastern. That would be 7%, 7, 8, 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific. In my mind, it's like I've got to be here at 8. So, But I know most people aren't in the mountain time zone. Um, I'll type that in here. Coaches, December 11th, 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific Standard. Okay. All right. I'm getting old enough. I have to talk out loud. I love middle age though, by the way, totally random topic. Um, the cool thing about middle age is a touch is a bit of self-awareness. Okay. Now let's, let's go. Um, let, let's go through this. Jeff, thanks for the kind words. I appreciate it. Um, we're going to pop this in here. Travis has a question. What type of specific work do you feel is needed in the off season, Jay? Man, I love that, Travis. Um, teeing me up, man. Teeing me up. I love it. Travis, I'd love your comments on or thoughts on this too. Folks, let's start with the end in mind, right? Here, here's one of the things we talk about in consistency is key. We got to go fast, faster, fastest. If you're running a 1600, what's your, what's your fastest 100 meters? 
Quick, what is your fastest 100 meters? Your last 100 meters. What's your fastest 300? The last 300. So the home stretch, the second curve, and the back stretch, so the last 300. I really like to look at the last 500 of a 1600. And everybody's like, well, what'd you run for the last lap? I understand that, but this is cool. If you're ready to move with 500 to go, you get a little bit of a jump on the person that's not moving till 400. You get a good position before the bell because you get it on the home stretch. Now they're trying to get on your shoulder with 300 to go, and then you can speed up. Anyway, I talk about all that and consistency is key. But Travis, here's the bottom line. Anybody who ran cross country and says, I don't have a lot of speed. I'm not a, a very good 400 meter athlete, or I don't have a good 400 meter PR. Here's the bottom line. You've got to be able to run whatever you're going to run in that last hundred meters. You should be doing strides, hundred meter strides or 150, or let's look at it in seconds, 15 to 25 seconds. You got to be doing that soon, as soon as possible. I mean, if, if you had a coach like Travis, or if you had a, a, a coach like me and we were at the track, um, let, let, let's say that your last meet was last weekend and then you got all of this week. And I believe that would make uh, December sixth, the, the a Monday. Travis and I might have you be have you doing speed development that Monday, but we're there to see you. Now we might have you do some flying thirties. Um, I would have you running over many hurdles, also called wickets. Um, and I'll, I'll put that in the chat at the conclusion. But there's a great video with Jeff Bollet talking about many hurdles. Bottom line, though, is, is most people don't have that coach and you don't have a coach who understands speed development and you don't have that aspect of your of your training that, that you can do. But keep in mind, if you want to be able to run fast at the end of a race in May and June, that process starts in December. OK, so now we work backwards and backwards and backwards. The workouts you're going to be doing with your coach when you resume practice end of February, beginning of March, that's where you need to be able to run race pace stuff. The, the athletes who joined me this winter, this is how I view it. They joined me this winter, build the aerobic engine, duh, everybody's doing that, strengthen the chassis, again, everybody's doing that in 2021, but I want them revving the engine. I want them to be able to do strides. I really like 150s in and out, 50 meters build up. 50 meters running a fast pace, 50 meters of a run out. And it, basically you just, you basically stop trying when you get to that, the beginning of that third 50, but your momentum is going to carry you out. Okay. So the bottom line is if we do some of those, that middle 50, if the weather's nice, even if you're in Indiana, or even if you're in, in Michigan, it's cold. If you can get to the track and, and shovel some of the track and it's safe and maybe even put on your spikes, if that middle 50 should be at 400 meter pace, if you think about it, what, what, what percentage is 50 meters of a 400? It's one eighth, right? It's 12.5%. You know, if you're a guy and you're hoping to split 55 or 52 in the track season in, in a, a 400, doesn't it make sense in February that you can run 50 meters, one eighth of that um, fast, right? And then to broaden it, this is where I really like 150s at 1600 meter goal pace. So Travis knows the uh, Oregon system really well. Um, the, uh, the, the, the Bill Bowerman system at, at Oregon, he talks about um, goal pace and date pace. Okay. And I talk about that and consistency is key as well, right? That, that we need to be doing race pace or faster. So if you're a girl and you ran 520 last year and you really want to run 412, you were running 80s right? And then 412s um, is, oh, I almost screwed up the math, the 78s, right? And 78 is 30. So it's basically a 40 second 200 versus a 39 second 200. And I I think it's fine, the athletes that join me in the winter, to do 200s at 40 seconds and then 39 seconds, or for this young woman to do 200s at 39 seconds. Now, I'm typically using 120s or 150s, but being on the track in January, or February, you it it will not lead to a too early peak. I'm gonna link to something else. There's a great video by John O'Malley. John O'Malley's boys won the Illinois State Cross Country title. Okay, I believe they're currently ranked number four um, in the nation right now. And at the uh, 2020 Boulder Running Clinics, a clinic where all these high school coaches come to Boulder and, and we talk training, he talked about the fact that running fast in January does not lead to a too early peak in May. And that running fast in January helps you in the cross country season 
you know, what is it, nine or 10 months later? And I, I fully believe in that. But Travis, this is where we're also going to talk about, um, th this is the type of stuff I'll be talking about Wednesday. I'm getting fired up for Wednesday because we, we, we get to talk training. So the one thing I wouldn't be doing in the months of January and February is stuff that's really going to be anaerobic and produce a lot of lactate, okay? Now, I understand there's that type of athlete out there, the quote, wired athlete, somebody who can run a good 200, their sweet spot is 400, 800, and when they run the 1600, they're, they're just not as good at it. They maybe ran cross country, but they're really not very good at it. Okay, you, you can make some arguments about them doing it differently. But I'm doing this coach for course for coaches this winter, and I'm going to tell them, if you have 20 athletes, you maybe have one of them. Like everybody wants to talk about, well, what training should I do for the wired athlete? You don't have that many wired athletes. I mean, you just don't, right? What you have are kids that ran cross country, and if they're young, they need to get really good at running 1,600 meters because if they can become a good 1,600 meter runner, then over the summer, you can build the volume, you can build intensity in September and October and have them run really fast in late October and November the next year. So obviously, I love talking about training. Uh, Travis, thanks for that. Um, okay, Rob, this is great. Oh, there we go. Rob Gray has a great question. Um, what is the change if you have an indoor season? Um, man, I I think I think some people don't like my answer on this, and I I value cross country and track mostly equally. I value track a little bit more because I I that's just my personal preference. I think running fast is is really neat, but I would say that's. 52, 48, right? And I live in a state where indoors um, isn't that important. Now, my claim to fame as a college, it's not a claim to fame. It was just the thing I did that was decent. I scored 13 points at the Big 12 indoor meet by placing second in the 5K on Friday night and fourth in the 3K on Saturday. And I love indoor track. As an athlete, I loved it. I played basketball in high school. I love the idea that there's this energy in you know, in the, in the, the, the stadium or in the complex that you're in. And, you know, even though the track was small and tight, this was a 200 meter flat track at Kansas state where, where I ran those times. Um, I, I love indoors as an athlete, but I, I do think, and I know this, you might not like this answer, but I think it's really hard for a high school athlete to have a rock and cross country season, a rock and outdoor track season and a rock and indoor track season. It's hard for college athletes to have a great year across all three. Okay. What, what I want to fully acknowledge is I live in Colorado and if you're in other States, you know, States, New England, where indoor track, you know, you can go to a facility and you know, there's not going to be a weather issue and your kids can run really fast. I mean, that that's absolutely great. But, um, the, the, the approach I take to training assumes that the focus is going to be April, May, and June. And if that doesn't fit your situation, um, whether it's my track training system for coaches, I mean, that's going to be focused on, on outdoors. And if it's, if it's my winter coaching, I mean, I, I just say it on coach Jay Johnson on, on my page. I, I don't, my winter coaching, if indoor track is going to be your focus, you shouldn't hire me as a coach. Cause we're, we're not going to focus on, on indoor races, but, but please know this. I, to be clear, I think indoor track is great if it's valued in your area of the country, but let's say you're in, in an area where, you know, there's an unofficial state meet and you could run some indoor meets, um, but you value outdoor track more, then I think you need to be honest. I mean, how many times can a kid quote, go to the well over the uh, course of a year? Right. So why, why don't we leave it th with that? But Rod, feel free to email me if, if you have any other questions and if I can be helpful. Um, okay. December 11th is junior cross country nationals, Jeff. Oh, that's a bummer. Um, well, I'm still going to do that at that time, but, but the bottom line, Jeff, is there's two things. Number one, it'll be, the recording will be here on YouTube. Um, so you can watch that for free. And number two, people who join the, the course, who do the track training system course, um, that's where I'm going to open it up and have access to it. And we'll do webinars every month. We'll go, uh, December through June, we'll do, do seven webinars. Those will always be recorded. Um, and it's one of those things that it's, uh, what do they call that? Like asynchronous learning. I don't think that's on, on demand, right? Bottom line is the videos will be in a place where 
um, when you're t when, when you have some time in your schedule, you you can watch those. Okay. Um, and Eva did a great job coaching her son Ryan this year. Glad you guys are driving home from the California State meet. Um, yeah. So we, we can wrap this up if if anybody else has any questions. Um, and please know this: I I love doing these. These are a lot of fun. Okay. Doesn't look like like any more questions. Well, um, I will share this all over social media. That Wednesday, we're going to talk about winter training and 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, and looking forward to it. Travis, thanks for the kind words. And yeah, hope you guys are also doing Oh, Travis, and we got to get you out to the Boulder Running Clinics at some point, um, even though I know you're a busy college coach, but uh, I think it'll be a great re recruiting opportunity too. So, and, and I will say that if you're a coach watching this, um, check out the Boulder running clinics. We're, we're a little past half, we're a little half, we're a little past half of our capacity. Um, there's a, there, there's a really good chance we will, we will run out of, of tickets this year. It's really a great opportunity. I know getting to Boulder in January is hard, but, um, it's, it's, it's really fantastic. And let's be honest, the energy in 2022 is just going to be so great because we haven't seen each other for two years. So. All right. Thanks everyone. Have a great rest of your uh, weekend.